Hello class, we're about to start section 2.1 using lines to model data. A scattergram, a graph or plot of plotted points that show the relationship between two sets of data. It should have labels and scaling on both axes. Example 1. Is there a relationship between education and prejudice? Suppose a psychologist <clears throat> gathers a random group of people to study this issue. For each person in the sample, she records the number of years of school completed and their score on the standard psychological test measuring prejudice. Scores are from 1 equals least prejudice to 10 most prejudice. Create a scattergram of these data, making sure to label scale and axes. Okay, now we need to scroll down. We need to put these values on this graph. So first of all, down the side here, we should have the uh, score of the prejudice test. The score on prejudice test. That should be your y-axis. Now your x-axis should be your years of education. Now, we will label this. Now remember, we were told earlier that the scores on this test are from 1 to 10. But we know we'll start off from 0. We know this is 1, this is 2. This will give us 4, 6, 8, 10, and at the very top will be 12. Okay, next, on this line here, we're going to count from 1 all the way up. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and finally 20. Okay, this is our years of education. So now what we need to do is plot these points. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is this here. Let's take a look at this chart. Years of education. Now, we had 12 years of education starting out, which is A. So we could go ahead and plot this. Now, you can label the letter so you could keep up with what's going on. So our years of education is 12. So it's 1. So we know that's our A. So our B, our years of education is 5. And it will be 7. Our years of education is 14, and the number would be 2. Our years of education is 13, and we'll do 3. Okay, class, I took the liberty of filling in the rest of the points because that would have took us a little too long trying to go through each and every point. So this is basically how your graph should look. So make sure you plot those points in the correct spots. So now we will scroll to the next page. Now on this page we have the TI-84 calculator instructions. Now you can read this at your leisure, but what I want you to pay attention to for this video is this link down here. It says it has a YouTube video tutorial on these topics for the calculator available at this website here. Now I have to warn you, this course pack only presents instructions for a TI-84 calculator with the newest operating system. Now TI-83s are sometimes similar but cannot use the newest operating system. So when you watch the video, the video is assuming that you have the TI-84 with the newest operating system. So it may look a little foreign to you if you don't have that. 
Now, we scroll to the next page. Now, this, this deals with you using Excel. Now, again, you can read this at your leisure. And, but I want you to go down here to the bottom where it has the website. You can type in this website and it will give you step-by-step -step instructions of how to set this up as an Excel file. Now, again, this course pack only presents instructions on Excel 2007. Now, other versions of Excel will work similarly. So if you have an earlier version or a later version, it should work about the same. But if it does not, please come to class and let me know. And we'll try and work something out. Now we go to the next page. Now this next page starts off with modeling. It says modeling is the process of creating a mathematical function that is a good representation of a real world situation. It will not usually match the data from the actual situation exactly, but it does so closely enough to be useful to us for making predictions. In this section, our model will be graphs. In the next sections, we'll learn how to find algebraic equations. For chapters 1 through 3, we will work with linear models, y equals mx plus b form, but other models will be found in later chapters. Now we come to example two. The amount of money Americans spend annually on cell phone services is growing. Let M equals F of T be the amount of money spent annually on cell phone services in the United States, T years since 2000. So what that means is this here. Your year is represented by T. So we can write that off to the side here. And remember, it's years since 2000, so we wouldn't use 2001. We'll put one because it's one year since 2000. This would be two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Because these are how many years these years are from 2000. It says, label the scale and the axis of the sc scattergram below appropriately. B, draw the graph of a linear model for M on the scattergram below. What would the model predict as the amount of money spent on cell phone service annually in 2000? When would the model predict the people in the U.S. will spend about 800, well, it's supposed to be $800 annually on cell phone service? Okay. So what we want to do is we already have the lines draw, the uh, points drawn for us, but now we have to do the model. And we know this y-axis will be basically money spent. The x-axis would be years since 2000. So we will label this. We know at this point here, this would be our zeros. So we can label this by hundreds. We'll go all the way up to... I believe this will go up to 800. Technically, we can go up to 900. Well, we might as well write it. Okay, now for our years, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we know that this graph is actually our T. Okay, so now we have these points here. Now what we want to draw is what is called a best fit line. Now, okay class, I took the liberty of drawing this graph out here. Uh, now, what we have here, we have a situation where we have these, these points are plotted. We labeled our, um, our T values a T axis and also our money spent axis here. Okay, now, what I did here, I drew what was called a best fit line, which we would get more into in uh, section 2.2. Now, what we need to do here is, we need to go up and make some predictions. We already labeled the scaling. We did this part. We also drew the graph. 
and C, it says, what would the model predict as the amount of money spent on cell phone services annually in 2000? Now, if we scroll down here, 2000 would be here at the zero mark. So this would be about close to $150. Okay, now for D, it says, when would the model predict that people in the U.S. would spend about $800 annually on cell phone service? That would be, if we look at 800, let me scroll down a little bit. Okay, if we look here at 800, and when we finally hit the graph, we're hitting the graph close to about 2010. So it's about 2010-ish. Okay, now we go on to the next page. We have what is called interpolation and extrapolation. It says, when the mathematical model is used to predict a point between two already known points, extrapolation when the mathematical model is used to predict a point beyond the given data points this could be in either direction so basically this goes like this here if we look here first of all example three it says label the areas of interpolation and extrapolation on the model for year and money on cell phone services found in the previous example identify the results found in part c and d as interpolation or extrapolation okay now so the first thing we have to do is this here extrapolation just means that it goes past what you are already given so let's take a look here at this graph we have to go back now remember we were only given from year one to year seven 2001 to 2007 so this portion here from here up until here is called our extrapolation now you can spell that word out you know at your leisure this would be your extrapolation now your intrapolation would be this here it'll go from all the points that you were given so this would be your interpolation okay now the last piece will go from here to all the way to the end here this would be x trapulation so if you notice we have x trapulation from the beginning to our first point and we have x trapulation from our last point all the way to the end of the graph and your inter interpolation is in between the points that we are given so now we scroll down here to example four it says consider the previous data containing the years of education versus the score on the prejudice test scores are from one least prejudice to ten most prejudice okay so what we have here we have the label the areas where the model would be interpolating label the areas where the model will be extrapolating. So we know for the extrapolation, we will go from basically outside here to almost but not including this point here. So this would be your extrapolation point. Okay, now from our first point all the way down here to our last point, this would be our interpolation. Okay, and then also from this last point here, all the way, including the end, all the way off of the graph, would be also your extrapolation. Okay, so we satisfy A and B. Now C. It says, how many years of education would the model predict for a person who scores a six on the test? Now, is this interpolation or extrapolation? So we know if they scored a six, this would be about here, which would be about seven years. 